Well, I mean, you served the six years and then you got six released, years, yeah. deported. Yeah. And looking at you today, um, you know, a very successful online personality. I Thank mean, you've you. got your show doing incredibly well. I mean, I'm a fan, I, you know, I, I, I definitely tune in. Thank you. So upon your release, how did you get to the point now where you're Mr. Sean? Right. Was like, so my writing, my writing got smuggled out of the jail right. back in 2004, I think, in the Maximum Security Madison Street Jail. Yeah. And that was the beginning of my activism. Yeah. When I got moved over to Florence Supermax after I got sentenced for a few months, that is when um, the media picked up on my blog, the BBC and the Guardian, they ran excerpts about mm -hmm. living with the cockroaches. Mm -hmm. In 2007, before I was getting released, my dad started the YouTube channel, Sean Atwood, it's on if you want to subscribe. Right. And we just posted videos every now and then, but I was mostly focused on the writing, getting my books out. Yeah. I've written 15 books now, and I've published about 20 for other people, other prisoners. For sure. And about five years ago, I started to focus on YouTube. I went on True Geordi podcast, did bits about making a murder, and it started to get more viral. Right. And it got more and more viral as I started to do Epstein. <laughs> I've written a book, Who Killed Epstein? Prince yeah. Andrew or Bill Clinton. But... I got my channel got terminated twice because of that. Serious. Yeah, so I had to de-escalate all that and go back to just doing the prison and the crime stories and my true crime podcast, which comes out. We do a couple of those a week, long form. They're incredible, man. But I feel blessed. Yeah. All these people helped me when I got out of prison. Mm -hmm. It's my karmic duty now to help guys who've got out of prison, help them get their stories out there, For sure. help them get their books out there if that's what they want in life. For sure. But my first prison uh, guest, podcast guest, Jamie Morgan Cain, he served 34 years in California prison for a crime he hadn't committed. Mm -hmm. Found out he was born on the Isle of Man, he wasn't even an American citizen, he'd been sold as a baby to an American family. Insane. Got deported back to London, he didn't know anybody. Through the podcast, he got a book deal with Mirror Group Books, He's got his second book about to come out. Right. And he's just been granted Isle of Man citizenship. We took him out there for the first time. He's <laughs> speaking to the prison and to the people. He, you could see he was at home. Yeah. He's set now to relocate to the Isle of Man. Because so many beautiful people have come forward to help him because they've heard his story online. That is the power of YouTube and podcasts. Definitely, man. So it's my responsibility to use that platform to help other people. I harm society in putting drugs. I deserve to get the punishment I got, and I think I just got just the right amount before any, anything more would have got me a bit institutionalized. Mm -hmm. So now I go into the schools and scur the living daylights out of them with these <laughs> stories. Mate, I mean. In the hope they won't get gangster writers. Crazy, man. And I got that word from Two Tonys. He's, thank you, Two Tonys. He's coined that God word, bless, gangster yeah. writers. Yeah. Don't get gangster writers, kids. <laughs> Keep your day jobs. For sure. Do your studies. For sure. Because it ends in the prison, police, death, mental hospital. 100%. And the government and the private prisons, they want young people out taking drugs. For sure. The contracts in the tens of billions a year, they look at you as suckers. They can arrest and send away for massive amounts. And your mums will have nervous breakdowns. My mum had to fly 5,000 miles to visit me. Crazy. She's outside for hours in the desert heat. They've got sniffer dogs on her ass and they're doing all this crazy shit. And then you come to the visit and your mum is sat there looking all crumpled over. Mm. And you think that your fucking lifestyle led to that decision. that You, you, you created your mum coming out like that. You've made have to go through all that, man, and it's um, it's something you, that you have to live with for the rest of your life. So think think about your mums and your family members. Absolutely, you getting it's all so glamorized and everything. But think about your mums and your family members. All these kids with the knives and shit, man. I concur. I absolutely concur. Yeah, yeah. think about yeah. these people, man. These people matter. Your mothers and you know what I mean. But above all, I have to big you up, uh, Mr. Atwood. I Thank absolutely you. have to take my heart off like it's incredible mm. like where you are now and obviously the pl platform you have thank you man. and as i said initially you're helping you have a story 
and now you're helping other people tell their story. Yeah. And boy, have you got some stories yeah. with some people, like that sort of thing. No matter what you've been, been through in life, yeah. you can turn it around and you can harness that dark energy. Well, you heard it from the horse's mouth. And put it into yeah. positive things. For sure, for sure. And you, you know, you may think that you're, you're effed because you, you've been in the system, yeah. but you're not. You, it, it, you can endure the hardships of life and it's given you a unique skill set and it's given you a character and an intelligence I'll big you up, man. that can lead to succeeding I'll in many things up. in life. I'll big you up. There's many different types of intelligence. Forget about academia. For sure. For the people coming from prison and the streets, they have a unique intelligence that can set them up for life, but they've got to harness it into the right direction. For sure. Away from gangsteritis. Absolutely. Yeah. So, a uh, bit of controversy now. Yeah, um, go for it. So, you're obviously a huge online personality, and that obviously comes with its sort of difficulties, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple, there's a few people that you're sort of clashing with now, I would say, right? Yeah. So there was a bit of back and forth with uh, Mr. Marvin Herbert. Oh my goodness. So um, we, we've had Marvin on here like yeah, recently yeah. and uh, obviously he said what he said. So if I can ask you specifically, um, what's, what, what's, what's the actual issue between the pair of you? Like what's actually going on between you and, you know, Marv? All right, let me lay this down. Please. Yeah. There's many different versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, just like last month, I woke up and everyone said, this hitman's on his way to your house to get you. Know, I see I see the videos, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so I, I live streamed it. I am waiting for you, Marvin. Absolutely, yeah. Got a thousand new subs that day. Thanks, Marvin. <laughs> All right. So I watched Marvin on YouTube. I saw how emotionally got when he was talking about his dad. For sure. He's been shot five times. For sure. This guy's lived a life. He's, he's been the real deal. So... Like I said earlier, my mission is people like that, bring them in, interview them, whatever opportunities open up, help raise them up in life. So I went to Marvin with a pure soul. Mm -hmm. It was agreed that through a mutual friend, Christian, KRN TV, I was going to interview Marvin, Marvin was going to interview me. We had a fantastic day. By the end of the day, he was talking about me doing his book, publishing his book. I've got a book publishing company. If you're out there, you've got a story, contact me, true crime, life stories. Absolutely. Now on the drive home with Christian, Marvin gets on speakerphone and he doesn't know I'm in the car. Wow. Yeah. And he's asking Christian if he'd sneakily recorded things that I'd said off camera. And I'm thinking, something's not right about this guy. But I gave him a pass. He's been shot five times. He's been yeah. through things. Yeah. I'm still going to help this guy. Helped him get a, a gig on uh, Lad Bible or whatever it was, Uni Lad that got him loads Lad of Bible, views. Yeah, 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 definitely. Then all of a sudden, there's a strange thing in the UK that the American audience won't be familiar with called the Podcast Wars, whereby several individuals who I helped yeah. decided that because I had the most subs, if they could destroy me and my reputation, they could take over. It's like, prison mentality you see that these dramas play out yeah they're not collaborative people they're competitive people makes sense marvin went on the other side of the podcast wars starts putting out videos about me atwards full of it he's only done one night in jail wasn't even convicted of ecstasy yeah i don't think he can read to be honest because my convictions all over the internet maybe because of his eye in that situation i'm not i'm not disrespecting that yeah but maybe he can't read and you know wild man's a figment of my imagination all this kind of stuff wild man was poorly at this time he only had months to live right and wild man was very this felt very disrespected that marvin was saying these things about him if marvin had got in the room with wild man wild man would have just sat on him you know, if he started disrespecting him like that, it would have been over for him. So, the beef starts heating up. You know, Marvin's saying all these things about me, all these crazy things. And um, it got to the point then where last month I woke up and Marvin's saying he's on the way to my house. And um, I just live streamed it right away. I mean, it was interesting yeah. to watch her being on the... Yeah. Sort of the, the the viewing end of it, like I mean, like what's happening here, sort of thing. If like. people are gonna kill you, mm -hmm. I'm not denying that Marvin was a formidable character back in he, the day. He definitely was. Definitely he was. Sure was. Definitely yeah. was. Yeah. 
I've been in a room with him. Yeah. He's a tiny guy. He's been shot up five times. His physicality is not what it was. I keep myself in shape. Yeah. I have no fear of fighting Marvin one on one. Right. If he's got a weapon, maybe a different story. But I think people with weapons don't announce on the Instagram that they're coming to your house. For sure. So I was waiting. I was waiting. He Initially, he said that he was coming over to do a protest, though, I believe. Of course. If you're going to put that out oh, there. Oh, that was code words for what you <laughs> We know what a peaceful protest <laughs> means. I feel you. In the underworld. I feel you. Yeah. So he, anyway, he was a no-show. Right. He was a no-show. Right. That day, I learned what the beef was. Marvin put out videos saying a lot of things about me that were false. Mm -hmm. I'd let it ride for a year. I interviewed Robert Green, 48 Laws of Power, right. late last year. Great book. Told him about the podcast wars. I said, look, these people are damaging my reputation. They put these videos out. I've been silent about it. Mm. He said, Sean, they're going to keep doing it unless there's consequences. So I thought the podcast war thing was over. <laughs> and what does Marvin do in December? Puts a video out saying I'm a police informant. Yeah. I'm not charged with ecstasy. What was it he said? I was... Um, Something to do with... I fraud, think. fraud. I'm a fraudster. Yeah. I'm a fraudster. Yeah. And I'd snitched on ecstasy dealers. And he's got my plea bargain. He knows all this. I wish he would put my plea bargain online. Because he's obsessed with it. He says it's going to show, it's going to show that I'm a snitch. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. He's then, he then announces he's going to interview people out of America that are going to blow my story away. Yeah. So, so he gets, he gets a guy on his channel who's been emailing me for a year, who's a ex kingpin, right? Right. And this guy's emailing me. I'm saying, why don't you come on my channel? And then all of a sudden, he starts sending me nasty emails. And I'm like, are you having a bad day or what? And he's like, you're not an ex kingpin. I'm going to get your plea back. <laughs> he's one of them. Yeah. I think people can't comprehend that because I've got this baby face, boy next door yeah. <laughs> that I've done the things I've done but they've never been in the room with wild man remember I was the brains he was the brawn for sure yeah yeah so this little guy goes on Marvin's channel and um must be smaller than Marvin Marvin's tiny so I'm watching him on this podcast I mean, he was kind of tall when I when I sort of met him like, was who it? was oh, Marvin no yeah I mean you're a tall lad yourself so obviously you're, I get you're it. tall yeah you're I know tall. and he, he was tall. like he was he was pretty tall for, for him anyway but anyway sorry all right anyway, anyway, yeah. anyway. <laughs> I can't remember Marvin as tall unless he's yeah. shrunk in my imagination <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be the afro now I don't know like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right so 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 where was I um so he says yeah he's gonna get all these guys from America on to blow my story up yeah so he does, he, he starts getting guys from America. He's got the little guy who um, is in the feds in Florida. Yeah. All right, so he's now saying that in Florida, here's what happens. You can talk to the other races. Mm -hmm. If you get a plea bargain for nine and a half years, you've got to be a snitch. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to blow holes in my story, right? right? They're trying to say that the Florida system, the feds, is the same as the Arizona state Right. system right. which is on the other side of the country yeah. the federal system is completely different from the state system and this is like comparing prison in one side of Europe Turkey <laughs> with prison in France for example <laughs> all BS then he gets another guy on and he, he does the same thing with him so I'm thinking Robert Greene there's got to be consequences Marvin's made up all these lies about me mm -hmm. I'm gonna file a complaint with YouTube because if there's defamation, there's defamation. If there's copyright, there's copyright. Mm. So I filed some complaints with YouTube. No intention to take his channel down. Gave him one strike. Thought he would learn his lesson. Gets another guy on, disrespecting me. Gave him a takedown notification on the second one. Mm. Which he did not comply with. So he got another strike, which is on him. I had no intention of striking him. He ends up with a third strike that had nothing to do with me. Right. So the day he was coming to my house was because he'd received notification of channel termination, which I had oh, no okay. clue he okay. had received. Right. Now, <clears throat> I've got this live stream going saying, I'm waiting for you, Marvin. I'm finding all this information. I was tuned had in, all these yeah. strikes, yeah. And um, so now I'm in a position to reverse my strike to save his channel. 
So I've got a moral dilemma. <laughs> All these people in the live stream are saying, you know, he's after you over, let his channel go. And I'm thinking a man's channel is his bread and butter. He's built this up. He's trying to do the right thing. My philosophy is to help prisoners. Yeah, for sure. If I let his channel go, this goes completely against what I stand for. Yeah. My heart was open, even though he was talking all this shit about wild man, even though he'd left voicemails that I cannot release to the public because he would probably go back to prison saying what he was going to do to me and my family. I've got those recorded. Oh, really? Yeah. Even though he was putting all this pressure on me and being like completely horrible and making me think the right thing to do is not help him in this situation. I thought, this guy, is, it's a cry for help, really. This guy's struggling mentally. He's been shot up. His brain might not be all there. I can't do this to him. I'm going to reverse the strike and save his channel. Mm. I didn't even get an apology. Didn't even get an apology. Yeah. That's interesting. But that's his business. Um, I realise in, the, in the, the pyramid of the podcast wars, Yeah. There's people above him who won't say things about me now mm -hmm. because they know their channels will get struck and there will be consequences because they're lies. And his channel was used as cannon fodder by these people. Mm -hmm. He probably doesn't even know that he was manipulated into that position. Right, I see. Yeah, yeah. So I've got no beef with Marvin Herbert right now. Right. I think the right thing for him to do will be to acknowledge that I saved his channel and apologize for saying lies about me and disrespecting Wildman because he was laughing at me on the phone that Wildman had died. Yeah. That's, that's pretty rough. That yeah. is very rough. Yeah. And also apologize for the threats he made to my family and my parents and saying that he was going to go all the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's really wrong. If he does want to keep the BS going mm -hmm. and escalate, mm -hmm. then I will release those messages he has left. And he's telling me he's got TV deals and book deals and all kinds of things. If I release those messages, he's going to have problems. So yeah, so stay away from it, Marvin. Yeah, yeah. pretty sticky. Um, and I do want to big up Marvin Herbert as well. And obviously, you know, I'm someone I've got to remain impartial, but hopefully, course, yeah. I hope course, you yeah. guys can sort of like, you know, reconcile and, you know, just get back. I to hope so too, because yeah. all the intermediaries I'm dealing with now are telling me word on the streets is he's hiring young people because he's got my address. He's put my address online. He's hiring young people to go there and yeah, do I something. Mean, the addresses and stuff like that. I feel like that's just off limits. Like that's not really. Yeah, well, he put, he put my address yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. So Crazy. I was doxxed. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. And um, I also want to touch on another individual. Um, obviously, you've had a bit of a code name for him for a while, <laughs> but um, Mr. James English, who right. I'm also a big fan of, by the okay. way. And uh, I was talking to you earlier. That's how I came across yourself, obviously, yes. when you was on the platform. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you you and, and James are probably the heavyweights as far as the UK online sort of media circuit is concerned, as far as podcasting, interviewing, mm -hmm. in my opinion, anyway. And... Where and uh, sorry, when and how did that go sour? If, if I if I may ask. All right, so he was coming up on the interview scene, and he's been to prison himself. Yeah. So again, my philosophy is to collaborate and help people. For sure. I went onto his channel. We were sharing guests. Went up, met him up in Glasgow, Edinburgh, wherever the hell it was, and I was praising him to the high heavens. If people go back and look at my early interviews with people, both interviews like Blink, mm. Darren G, I'm saying, check, you know, check out James's interview with Blink. Check out For James's sure. interview with Darren G. For sure. And subscribe to his channel. Yeah. So when the Podcast Wars stuff broke out, it was a collaboration between um, James and I'm not going to say the other podcast, a much smaller podcaster out of Liverpool. Right. Like I said, you know, in prison, Pablo Escobar said, envy kills more people in Colombia than cancer. And the people I've seen are divided into two business mind frames. There's collaborative people and there's competitive people. So all along, I was helping all these people. They were seeing me as the biggest guy on the block who they wanted to take over competitively. Sure, that makes sense. So they struck about two years ago, they struck. 
and just started putting videos out saying I was a paedophile, I was a police informant, I was gay. I mean, James English on his channel put a video out of me dressed up as Jimmy Savile, saying I was, I was gay and fruity, like that's a crime, you know? Yeah, Homophobia right there, I don't think that's allowed on YouTube. Mm. And um, on and on and on and on it went. And like I said, I didn't respond. And Robert Green says, you've got to start showing them the consequences, Sean, or they're going to keep doing it. Interesting. So even to this date now, I've got, you know, I've interviewed 200, 300 people on my True Crime podcast. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, hundreds more. I must be getting up to 500 to 1,000 now of, of the guests. Big I told up. you in the beginning. Big yourself up, yeah. I'm getting guests up and down the country contacting me to this day yeah. saying, James English and these other people are contacting them telling them I've got paedophile charges in America. So they're trying to blackball you. Yeah, Darren G. Thank you, Darren G, because you exposed all of this big when up, we reunited. Up, up, Darren, G. Darren G showed me the screenshots from James English telling him I had nasty charges in Arizona and duped Darren G into just exploding on me on James English's platform because he didn't have the balls to do it himself. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of mind games and manipulation going on. So until James stops pulling all these stunts from behind the scenes and trying to block my podcast guests from coming on, mm -hmm. this war's not going to end. I thought it ended last year. Next thing I've got Marvin Herbert showing up at my house and I've got all these podcast guests telling me they're getting told I'm, I've got paedophile charges in Arizona by James English and these other characters. Crazy. Absolutely crazy, yeah. And they think these, you know... They think they can just say these things. These people aren't going to call me up and tell me. For sure. They're not the brightest people. Insane, I but, mean. But, but these videos English has put out have reached 2 million people. Yeah. Saying that. So I've got threats to this day, including lunatics contacting my mum because of this motherfucker. And he's saying he's doing his podcast for his family. Well, he needs to think about the harm he's caused my fucking family. Because he kicked this off, and I know he's taking hits now, and that's going to fucking continue yeah. until he backs off. And the only way to reverse it, English, is to put a video out saying Atwood is not a paedophile. He doesn't have paedophile charges in Arizona. He's not banned from schools. He's told everyone I'm banned from schools. He's not gay, and he's not a police informant. And so you do that, James, and reverse that with your viewers. This shit you've started is going to continue. And you may think you could just fucking do this and walk away from it, but you're going to continue to take hits. You can de-escalate this, get that fucking apology video up. I've asked for it many times and you've doubled down. If you want to continue to take hits, bring it on. Some strong words, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's really real, I guess, uh, from what I've just taken. It's actually really, really... When it affects your mum, how yeah, fucking low sure. is that, for man? For sure, for sure. For when sure. a guy out the blue tells two million people you're a paedophile, you're a snitch, and, that, and you're and gay, that, and, that accusation. and then lunatics are contacting your family, your mum can't sleep at night. Yeah. Think about that, you fucking coward. Crazy. I mean, that accusation alone, that's not something yeah. to throw around. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, insane. And again, hopefully, this can be reconciled, and, you know, as I said... I'm a, I'm a fan of... He's not man fans. enough to reconcile, yeah, Mo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've offered the olive branch multiple times. I know. And he doubles down, puts a new video up and adds more bullshit. He said I was in a child abduction conspiracy with a guy called Wilfred Wong on the last one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, insane. Insane to say the least. But, he just um, will not accept that he was wrong yeah. to the public because he knew he was wrong from the get-go. Yeah. You do not go for 10 years on YouTube and have your books published by Random House and have two documentaries by National Geographic and a documentary by Vice without them going through all your fucking paperwork and seeing you are not a paedophile or a snitch. For sure. He knew that. He knew that. Yeah. But he thought, if I go with this and repeat it to so many people, I'll knock this fucker down and take over the game. And he's telling everyone I'm the biggest in the fucking podcasting world. Bigger than Joe Rogan! <laughs> He starts his every podcast out with Boom, You're On, which yeah. Joe Rogan was doing five years ago. <laughs>
Yeah, as I said, like, you know, I, I admire James. I admire yourself. And you admire James because well, he copied everything I've done. Uh, yeah, he's I'm, used I'm, my I'm technique. Gonna... <laughs> everything I've done. Yeah. He's watched me. He used to, his podcast used to be an hour long. Yeah. Now they're like two, three hours because he knows. Yeah. Get the questions out like Atwood. Sit back, let him talk. <laughs> it's copied my entire business model. Yeah. No, I'm sure and big up yourself, honestly, man. And uh, look, my you know, ego's rather, not the fucking like the Grand Canyon I, I, like totally, it was anymore. Totally, totally. I'm a yoga guy. I, I fully respect. Yeah, him, yeah. And, and when your ego gets out of control like him, yeah, this is what happens. You start wars and you don't see the blowback that's going to happen on yourself. I know the hits he's taking. For sure. I know he's fucking regretting it, and he has the opportunity to end it by doing an apology video because he started it. And that is his social yeah. responsibility to do that doesn't matter what troll channels are saying yeah if you've got a big platform and you put videos out to two million people that's a whole different ball game totally different yeah well uh mr sean atwood what an experience man honestly uh, truly amazing to have this conversation with you as i said i'm a fan i'm a huge admirer and you obviously have amounted so much success and i'm not surprised because obviously you are who you are I wish you much success for the future and much love, honestly. Look, much love and respect to you, Really Mo. appreciate your time. I, I, you know, it's such a good vibe in here. Come and on, appreciate man. it. Give me a hug, man. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs>